Did you know that after New Year's, Christmas is the most celebrated holiday in the world? I mean, statistically this would make sense. Of the 8 billion people on Earth, an estimated 2.2 billions are followers of Christianity, the religion that lays claim to the holiday. You may have heard the phrase, there's nothing new under the sun. I've always liked this quote, because it's sort of a poetic way of saying, there's no original idea. But the quote actually comes from the Old Testament. It's a Bible verse. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. As it turns out, the writer of this passage, King Solomon, couldn't have been more spot on. Throughout human history, there have been countless cultures that have worshipped a deity that had a direct connection to the sun. Many in fact saw the sun as God. The Romans had Sol and the Norse had Freyr. But one of the best known gods to be associated with the sun is Ra, the Egyptian sun god. While ancient Egypt religion was polytheistic and had many gods, Ra is probably one of the most recognizable, and this is likely due to Ra's ultimate influence in the world's major monotheistic religions today. Goats and deer, for all intents and purposes, look very similar. They are hoofed animals with bony weapons protruding from their skulls. They even serve similar niches in their environments. But did you know the deer is actually more closely related to a giraffe than a goat? While both come from the same order, Unglata, the families they're in, Bovidae and Cervidae, are separated by millions of years. However, they do have a common ancestor living today, the musk deer, and the only surviving member of the Moscidae family. For many people, hearing the word evolution conjures up images of apes and Charles Darwin. But the act of slow, gradual change over time can also be applied to things like language and religion. In ancient Egypt, when most of the population was practicing polytheism, a group of people broke off and began following a single god, Aten. This was one of the first known instances of a monotheistic religion in human history. What's interesting is that Aten and Atenism is directly tied to Ra, the sun god, in ancient Egyptian polytheism. And the major Western monotheistic religions today that dominate the earth, like Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. Much like the musk deer and the mosquitae are our common ancestors of deers and goats, Antonism is the common ancestor of the Abrahamic religions and ancient Egyptian polytheism. Change in evolution comes from the sharing of genes. Parents pass on a gene for brown eyes to a child, but that child can't pass any new genes back to his parents. This applies to religion as well. Change in religious beliefs come from the passing of ideas from one group to the next, but much like evolution, these ideas can only be passed forward and not backward. You can see this firsthand in how the Abrahamic religions reference each other in their holy books. The newer books always reference the older books, but the older books never reference the newer books. It's when new ideas are added that new branches begin. While I'm not religious, my family is Roman Catholic. Next to Eastern Orthodox, it's the oldest version of Christianity today, founded somewhere around 1054 CE. The slow roll of idea exchange and borrowing has yet to stop, and now, Christianity has hundreds of different denominations, with some that have branched off so far from Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodox that they're nearly unrecognizable as coming from the same religious family. The celebration of Christmas is one of the few meeting points that keep things in order, but even Christmas bears the remnants of adopted beliefs and idea sharing from past cultures and mythology. In Southern Europe, images of the Roman god of the sun, Sol, gave way to some of the classic religious imagery we know today. Symbolism like candles, wreaths, and the practice of giving gifts on Christmas all come from the holiday Saturnalia, which celebrates the god of Saturn. As the religion moved north, we were introduced to Christmas trees, mistletoe, and yule logs, which all were borrowed from ancient Germanic religions. 
But what about the more silly concepts of Christmas? Like a heavy bearded man that rules over elves and flies around in a chariot led by hoofed animals. For that, we can thank the Norse. Warning, I am going to butcher some Nordic and Norse names in this episode. Please forgive me in advance. In Norse mythology, the god of the sun, Freyr, lived in the world of Elfheim and ruled over elves. Odin is believed to be the inspiration behind the most popular look of Santa Claus today. Even the concept of a man flying around in a chariot led by hoofed animals comes from the Norse. Freyr had a chariot pulled by boars and Thor, yes, that Thor had a chariot pulled by two goats named Tangenschneer and Tangenjoster, which translates to snarler and teeth grinder. And if we've learned anything in my tangent earlier, is that it doesn't take much to get from a goat to a deer, or in this case, a reindeer. I guess there really is nothing new under the sun. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. In my last video, I said that uh, Miss Marvel Kamala Khan was the first Muslim superhero in Marvel history. That is not true, thanks to YouTuber The Fourth Snake for pointing that out. Uh, there was actually an X Men character uh, named Dust who was around before her. Where I got mixed up was um, Miss Marvel was the first uh, Marvel superhero uh, of Muslim of the Muslim faith who had their own solo comic book. That's where I messed up. I wanted to clarify that so that people don't think I'm a an idiot. Um, I also wanted to say that this is uh, the one year anniversary of me kicking off uh, my dumb question in this on this platform on YouTube. And, you know, I, I didn't put out the content that I thought, well, I didn't put out the content at the pace that I thought I was going to. I think originally when I was speaking with the team over at uh, the Identity Tampa Bay, uh, they asked me, you know, how often can you put out uh, episodes? And I was like, ah, pff, probably two a month. And I think the average with everything that I've done probably comes out to like one every three months. So it clearly was not the rate that I was uh, expecting. This year was had some ups and downs. Uh, nevertheless, I, there, there's just so many people that want to thank for making this year much easier uh, than it could have been. Uh, people who I met over on Twitch and people who I've met over on YouTube and even Twitter. Um, you can see all their names down below. I, I honestly, I uh, just want to thank all of you from the heart and let's make 2020 a a great year and hopefully you're gonna start putting these out a little bit more and you know i really enjoy doing this so thank you very much and have a good one i guess i don't know not really good with ending these uh i do plan on really announcing my patreon it's kind of a d-bag thing to do when you have less than 500 500 subscribers but i mean why why not yes that thor had a chariot pulled by two goats named i'm gonna f this up ten is ten grishnir and tungan joster which translates to snarler and teeth grinder and if we've learned anything yes that thor had a chariot pulled by two goats named Tungenschneer and Tungenjost. F*** you, I can't, I can't do it.